Welcome to How You Pictured It, the podcast for creative entrepreneurs ready to grow their business in a way that feels good. Here you'll find actionable tips and tools to create the business and life you pictured. I'm your host, Kate Hyde with Dear Kate Brand Strategy. Let's get started. Welcome back to How You Pictured It. Today we are wrapping up our four-part series all about websites, and we're talking about how our website fits into our marketing puzzle. If you've missed the other episodes, first we talked about why your website matters and how your website helps your business grow. In the second episode, we talked about how to get a strategic website between DIY, custom sites, and template customization. We walked through all of those options with their pricing and their time commitments um, and just discussed how to decide which is the right choice for you. And then in the third episode, we covered what pages you need on your website and how to determine kind of what goes where um, and work through that customer journey. So let's get into today's topic. We're talking about how your website fits into your marketing puzzle. When I'm talking about a marketing puzzle, it's a group of actions that help you connect with your customers, create awareness, generate leads, and boost your sales. In today's world, you can't really just take one action and hope that it works. You have to do a lot of marketing activities to generate leads and bring people into your business. Some of those marketing activities are things like posting to social media, using live video, YouTube, podcasting, networking in person, email marketing, paid advertising, and then of course your website as well. So how do we fit this puzzle together? How do we figure out where each piece goes? I like to think of your website as the picture on the box of your puzzle. It's that thing that you reference as you build the puzzle and put together all of the pieces. It's kind of where everything leads back to. It's the big picture. Let's get into this a little bit more and I'll explain what I mean. So when you're doing all of these other marketing activities, you're posting to your Instagram or your TikTok, you're using uh, YouTube to create longer form content or maybe just using YouTube shorts, Um, you've got a podcast or you're sending emails, all of that has to come from somewhere, right? Like you have to have kind of a core piece that those things build from. When you've got a great strategic website and you've put the time and the effort into kind of building your brand and building your brand messaging with your website, all of those other things become so much easier. You've got, again, that picture on the box. You know what things need to look like um, as you put them together. So as you're creating content, you've got that core message already ready to go and You've got the visuals, you know exactly what everything needs to look like to create those things and create a cohesive experience for anyone that finds you at any point um, along all of those marketing activities. That cohesive experience and consistency from one platform to the other creates credibility and trust in your audience. It also creates recognition. So when you share something, it's easy for someone to realize, hey, I know who's posting this. I recognize this person. I trust them. I like them. And typically, they'll be more likely to buy with those no like and trust factors knocked off the list. So why is it important to have our website be that core piece? Why do we want all roads to lead back to our website? Well, you've probably heard it all before, but Your website is the place that you own on the internet. Instagram, TikTok, any of those platforms could go away at any time and you could lose that audience um, that you feel like you've been building. When you've got a website and an email list, highly recommend that as well. You're building your authority and your credibility in a place that you have control over. And like we talked about in the first episode of this series, Google leads are more qualified leads. People that come to your website from Google are going to be more likely to be ready to buy than someone who comes across your content on Instagram or uh, TikTok or wherever. People on Google are searching for your services and they find your website there. I also like to use your website as the center of this cohesive brand message and strategy because it's a bigger platform. It's a place where you can really get out all of your ideas, um, all of your thoughts, and build a client journey from start to finish to understand exactly everything that someone needs to know before they book with you. Then when you're going to post on Instagram or wherever, 
you have like that, again, that picture on the box. You can go back to your website and take pieces and parts of your website and see what things you can create content for that relate back to your website. As far as Google goes, Google loves traffic to your website. So when you're posting to social media and you've got those link in bio or like when you're sending people to links, you always want to send them back to your website um, because that is getting more traffic to your site. Google loves to see that people are finding value in your website and visiting your website. So when you're using um, your link in bio and pointing it back to your website, and they're getting the content that you promised from Instagram or wherever back on your website, um, Google loves to see that and it helps increase your ranking and your your SEO on your site. So that means that you'll show up in search results more likely on Google when you're using those things. And again, then you'll be getting more of those good, warm, qualified leads. Oftentimes I see people using things like Linktree or Link in Bio or one of those kinds of platforms that allow you to put multiple links in for, um, you know, for Instagram or wherever. And I highly recommend instead building that page on your own website. You can have something lo- that looks very similar. That's a list of different links, um, but have it, of course, branded, matching your brand messaging, and then also being directly on your website at your URL instead of sending them to another site and then maybe back to your website. You can also create more longer form content on your website in the form of a blog. Blogs are great for, again, having fresh content on your site for Google to crawl, and that helps your SEO and bring people into your site and build your business that way as well. But also when you're you're taking the time and you're creating that long form content, then you can repurpose that into your social media posts, into your email list. Um, you can also, you can use like YouTube and create videos and then um, embed those into your blog and use um, transcripts and things like that to, again, create more content that's leading more people back into your site. Your marketing plan really should be about nurturing people and understanding where they are in the customer journey and in their buying journey. That's why we do all of these different marketing activities um, and not just one. We need to understand where people are at and be able to create an environment for them to be ready to buy. With a strategic website, that's exactly what we're doing. We're creating a place for them to go, a home for our business on the internet that explains everything that we do, how we can help people, and make sure that they feel seen by us. We want people to understand how and why they should work with us and that we're the right fit for them. If you are ready to get that strategic website and you need a little bit of help doing that, figuring out what the steps are, how to get all of these parts and pieces into place. I have a free masterclass coming up called The Roadmap to Your DIY Website. You can find the information for that at dearkatebrandstrategy.com slash roadmap. I hope this episode has been helpful for you to understand exactly where your website fits into your overall marketing plan and how it can really help you grow your business. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Dear Kate Brand Strategy. I really look forward to working with you and seeing you in that free masterclass coming up soon on July 6th at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you're listening to this after that time, it's okay. You can still go to that link and get access to the masterclass recording. Um, I look forward to talking with you and I hope that you've enjoyed our series on websites. Our next episode, we'll get back into more guest interviews. I'm excited to share with you a couple of episodes that I've already got recorded and ready to go in the month of July. Please take a moment to rate and review how you pictured it on whatever podcast player you're listening to, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.